What's going on guys, Garrett here from Core Performance and welcome to our instructional video for Iceplate Exo Gen 3. We've got a lot to cover in this video. We're gonna teach you everything you need to know about your Iceplate Exo Gen 3. So I'm gonna lay out the contents of what we're gonna discuss so that you can jump to the exact part that you need or you can stay for the whole experience. So today we're gonna be discussing why Iceplate Exo Gen 3 exists. We're gonna go over a basic overview of function, physical design and features, mounting and deployment, sizing and specs, and finally, care and maintenance. Let's get started. All right, guys, let's talk about why Iceplate XO exists. So the problem is the traditional plate carriers often lack integration with thermal regulation and hydration systems, as well as being unnecessarily heavy due to material and design choices, leading to decreased performance in extreme conditions. The solution is Iceplate XO Gen 3, which was developed to seamlessly integrate with our IceAge ecosystem products like Iceplate, ice flask and ice vents to provide active thermal regulation, enhancing the operator's physical capabilities while featuring an ultralight minimalist design intended for maximum weight savings in a full load-bearing duty-ready platform. So that in a nutshell is why Iceplate XO exists and some of the benefits that you can get from it, working in concert with products from our Ice Age ecosystem like our Iceplate Curve, Ice Flask, and our Ice Vents. That allows you to boost your human performance and mitigate heat illnesses and heat injuries. Let's move on to the next section, guys. For this next section, guys, we're gonna give you a basic overview of function, so how Iceplate Exo Gen 3 interfaces with the products from our Ice Age ecosystem to boost your physiological performance and your capabilities under extreme conditions. Let's get started. So firstly, we're gonna talk about conduction, which is provided by Iceplate and Ice Flask. That's active thermal regulation, cooling, heating, and hydration that's provided by putting something warm or something cool against your body. So the way that Ice Plate does that is it Velcros directly on to your internal plate bag via IMS Pro Gen 3. You just slap it on, put it on your back, connect your Source 90 drink tube, and you can take advantage of that 50 fluid ounces of hydration and the thermal regulation capabilities that it offers. For Ice Flask, you can do it one of two ways. You can use our Ice Flask wing holster, which allows you to mount it in a radio wing configuration or a dangler on the front or back, and the Ice Flask Molly holster, which allows you to molly it pretty much anywhere where you have a molly grid. The same thing applies to Ice Flask as Ice Plate. It provides thermal regulation capabilities when it's in contact with your body. So to actually get the maximum benefits out of Ice Flask, you're gonna to want to mount your wing holster or your molly holster in that negative space inside your plate carrier so that it is in contact with your body. And it also provides 16.9 fluid ounces of hydration anywhere that you wanna put it. So now we're gonna talk about convective thermoregulation, which is found in our ice vent suite. So we have these mounted on our plate carrier in our ice vents aero shoulder pads up here and on the inside of our cover run and the inside of our plate bag with our ice vents pontoons. So these are antimicrobial, 90% air by volume, super great for minimal wet weight gain um, and it's not gonna stink or smell. So you can place these anywhere that you would have traditional foam or space or mesh padding. And with our honeycomb ventilation matrix, they provide great standoff ventilation and comfort padding so that you can minimize sweat in those areas, minimize rub and hot spots. So that is a basic overview of function, guys. If you want more information about the specific capabilities and functions of these individual products, be sure to check out their product pages, which will be linked in the description below. Let's move on to the next section, guys. All right, guys, let's talk about the physical design and features of Iceplate Exo Gen 3. So first feature is ultralight laminate construction of Iceplate Exo Gen 3. That provides minimal weight gain and with the laser cuts, it provides minimal wet weight gain because it has maximum drainage. Iceplate Exo Gen 3 weighs approximately 15.2 ounces with the side strap package, which makes it one of the lightest in its class. And with the Axel Equinox Cumberbund, it weighs approximately 23.2 ounces. All right, so feature number two are the mounting points for your various pouches and accessories and what have you. So over on the front side here, we've got these laser cut PTT mounts. We have a four by six, field of laser cut negative maps for mounting your admin pouches or your EUDs or whatever you see fit to mount on the front of your plate carrier here. On the rear side, we have a row of four up top, which cascades down to a row of six traditional negative maps. And then on the bottom down here, we have half spaced Molly, 
half space negative maps so that you can mount your accessories, your pouches, your back panel adapters, anything in whatever spacing configuration that you see fit. So feature number three is our Velcro field. So we have these Velcro fields up front on the front and rear for mounting identification patches and accessories. And on the interior of each plate bag, we have full Velcro fields for mounting ice vents or IMS Pro Gen 3 to carry ice plate. Feature number four, thinner and more flexible shoulder straps for increased comfort and mobility. So feature number five is plate bag lacing. We have these laser cut eyelets on the side. So if you want to run thinner plates inside your plate bags, you can run shock cord, 550 cord, whatever you want to use through those laser cut eyelets and cinch down your plate bag so that those thinner plates don't move around at all. All right guys, so the final feature we're gonna go over is shoulder hardware. Iceplate Exo Gen 3 is compatible and is designed to integrate with shoulder hardware like this First Beer Tubes adapter, which we have here, um, but it does not come with it. You're gonna have to pick up that hardware on your own as an additional accessory. For more info on what specific types of shoulder hardware are compatible with Iceplate Exo Gen 3, check out the product page. And we also have a video on how to mount that shoulder hardware to Iceplate Exo Gen 3, which will be linked in the description below. All right, now we're gonna talk about mounting and deployment. So how to mount your Axle Equinox Cumberland or your side straps to your Iceplate Exo Gen 3. Let's get started. All right, guys, let's get into it. How do we mount and deploy our Axle Equinox Cumberland onto our Iceplate Exo Gen 3? So to start, I'm going to go over what we have here, what comes in the box with your Iceplate Exo Gen 3 when you select the Axle Equinox Cumberland package. So first of all, we have our Iceplate Exo Gen 3 plate bags. We've got the front and rear plate bags here. We've got the actual cover run itself. We've got a 48 inch long piece of shock cord that is 1 8 inches thick. And we've got our axle SPC tubes adapter kit. So we're gonna go through what's in here that you need and what you actually don't need. Uh, so all of this comes with it, but to actually mount your cover run to Iceplate Exo Gen 3, you only need certain things out of this bag. So firstly, you need your actual SPC tubes adapters here. So we've got those. So next up is this little bag of tricks here. So the first thing I'm gonna pull out is this thicker shock cord here. So you can use this to mount your cover run, but it will greatly reduce the amount of stretch that you can have. So we recommend for best results and op optimal stretch, use the thinner shock cord that we've included. Next up is this cordage here. This is just a replacement for these little pull tabs on the end of the cover runs. So you don't need that to mount your cover run. Next up are these axle wedges. These are for mounting this cover run to an LV119, so you don't need these to mount it to this. And finally, we have something that we are going to use. These are the Axle Equinox retainers. These are actually going to be fitted inside these slits on your cover run to allow you to put shock cord through it and retain it and attach it to your rear plate bag. So you do need these. I'm gonna set these right here. All right, guys, the first thing that we need to tackle when it comes to mounting and deployment is the SBC tubes adapters themselves. So this is super easy. Just make sure that the axle tabs are facing up when you insert them. So the way that they index is just putting this tongue inside of the garage right here like so, and then folding it over so that that Velcro hook lines up with that Velcro loop in this field right here. Do the exact same thing with the other side. Again, make sure that this tab is facing up and then we fold over and there we go. Okay guys, so let's get into mounting the cover run itself. So we're gonna flip this over because we're just gonna be working with the beautiful backside of Iceplate Exo Gen 3. So to get started, we're gonna talk about the different ways that you can mount your cover run. Firstly, there are three points where you can mount it. Uh, you're gonna need two at a time because it slides in like this and you can adjust the ride height uh, based on your body type or your preference. Everybody's a little bit different. Usually people just prefer to mount it at the bottom too. Um, so depending on what your use case is or uh, how your body type is, you can pick one of two ride heights. The second thing is outboard versus inboard mounting of your cummerbund. So for outboard, it's going to be the plates actually compressing your body because the cummerbund is going to be behind the plates and squeezing them to you. For inboard mounting, the cummerbund itself is actually going to be the point of compression and squeezing around your body. So it really is just if you prefer the sandwich or the wrap. Um, so to mount it 
outboard like this. This is what most people usually prefer. So if you don't know what either of those mean or you don't know your preference yet, just stick with outboard mounting um, and you can always change this later if you prefer to. All right guys, so let's get into mounting the Karmabun now. Uh, before we start, I wanted to go over something. Uh, it's one of the things that we get the most questions about. Um, so we're going to show you how to mount your cummerbund outside of the plate bag itself, but please note that you actually have to have your cummerbund inserted and your retainers inside to lock it in place um, inside the plate bag before you start routing the shock cord. But because this is going to be the clearest way to demonstrate this, we're going to show you how to route the shock cord and the way in which we route it outside of the plate bag itself. So let's get started. You're going to take your retainer and make sure that it's mounted to the interior slits on your cummerbund, like so, with the holes facing outward so that they're close to each other. Just like this. And through the top here, just like that. Do the same thing on the other side. All right. So now that you have that done, it'll look like this inside the plate bag. Now let's go over to our shock cord and we're gonna begin routing the shock cord. So the first thing that you would do is if you have it in the outboard configuration, you're going to want to thread the shock cord through this molly grid, these two slits right here so that you have a little loop here. Since we're showing you outside of the plate bag, we're not gonna do that. We're just gonna show you the first step. So once you have that mounted through into that loop, you're gonna go down through the first holes. You can cross over if you want to. We typically don't. We just go ahead and go straight through like so. And then you're gonna cross up under into the next hole like that. Same with the other side. It's all about symmetry. You're gonna be doing this with all of them almost exactly the same. Now you cross over like this. So this cross threading here, as you can see, starting to form those X's with that loop at the top. And then you're gonna come up under like so on each side. So now you have two X's and a loop at the top. Now at this point you would thread these ends up through these slits here. Cross them over again. And then tie them off. Cut the remainder of your shock cord off, burn the ends and you're good to go. So guys, if you do plan to mount your cummerbund inboard, like we discussed earlier, so that it is the thing that's gonna be compressing you instead of the plates, you don't necessarily have to mount your shock cord uh, to your plate bag, but you can by looping it through this middle column right here on this grid on the inside of the plate bag. So again, this is the inboard way to mount it. Uh, very similar. Uh, you can either attach the cummerbund to itself with the shock cord or mount it through the plate bag. Okay guys, let's now talk about how to mount your side strap to your Ice Plate Exo Gen 3. So before we get into that, let's go over what comes in the box when you order the side strap variant of Ice Plate Exo Gen 3. So first of all, you're gonna have two quasim buckles and then the side straps with their respective split bar buckles to attach them and then 48 inches of shock cord that is 1 8 inches thick. So the first thing that you're gonna do when you want to mount your side strap to your Ice Plate Exo Gen 3 is detach the female split bar buckle from the side strap itself. And if you're not running a placard or you're just wearing this Exo in an armor only configuration with no magazines or nothing to attach to the front um, or you're running a different placard, then you can just mount these to the plate bag itself, like so. Just like that, so now you have your attachment points for the side strap. So now we're gonna flip the XO over and attach the side straps to the rear plate bag. 
So once you have measured that 48 inches of shock cord down and cut it and burned it and are ready to mount it, you take your rear plate bag and one of these pieces of shock cord and loop it through these slits and then take one of your side straps and attach via the shock cord and secure, just like so. So now we got one side down, move on to the other side and do the same thing. And there we go. So now flip over your plate bag and voila, you can attach your male and female side straps, quasim buckles, and there you go. You have your side straps attached to your plate carrier. So a final note is that these are adjustable and when you do adjust them, if you have some extra strap hanging out, you can use these keepers to secure that. So another way that you can mount your side strap is with a placard. So if you purchased an Ice Plate Exo Molly placard separately, you can use this to mount these buckles to the bottom. And I'll show you how to do that here in a minute. So the first thing you're gonna do when you want to mount the placard and then the side straps after that is install your quasim buckles to the front plate bag, like so. Do the same to the other side at the same height. Okay, so once you have those installed, then you just clip in your placard like this. Made it up with those Velcro fields. And now you take your split bar buckles and mount them to either side via these tabs on the Ice Plate Exo Molly placard. Do the same to the other side here. There you go, so now those are attached. You can then attach your side straps like so. So the next way is with an aftermarket or third-party placard. So this is the Dynamic Principles Micro Molly Placard V2. We do carry this on our website. We have a partnership with Dynamic Principles, so you can check it out there. Any placard that has these kind of loops and tabs that are compatible with first spear tubes adapters are compatible with these split bar buckles and therefore compatible with our side strap configuration. So the same thing applies. You're gonna have those quasim buckles mounted and you're just gonna clip in your placard here, made it up with those Velcro fields and then take those split bar buckles and attach them where you want. So we're gonna do the same thing to the other side, flip it around here. And there we go. Now that those are attached, you can then attach your side straps, just like so. So that's it. So that's gonna do it on how to mount and deploy your Cumberbund onto your Ice Plate Exo Gen 3 or your side straps if you selected that package. Now let's move on to the next section, guys. All right, guys, now let's talk about sizing and specs. So firstly, Ice Plate Exo Gen 3 is available in berry compliant material and USMCA compliant material, depending on what you're gonna use it for. As for sizing, Ice Plate Exo Gen 3 comes in medium and large. Check out the product page uh, for that and choose the size that you prefer. And for plate bag sizing and what plates Ice Plate Exo Gen 3 can accommodate, it is optimized for medium shooter, swimmer, or ESAPI armor plates, nine and a half inches by 12 and a half inches up to 1.1 inches thick but it can also accommodate 10 inches by 12 inches uh, up to 0.75 inches thick plates as well. For the large size Ice Plate Exo Gen 3, it accommodates 10.25 by 13.25 plates that are up to one inches thick. 
Now let's talk about care and maintenance for your Iceblade XO Gen 3. So all you have to do is hose it down and let it dry in the sun. If you have a particularly stubborn stain, you can put some dish soap on a rag and rub it out and it should come right out of there. So that about does it for our Iceplate XO Gen 3 instructional. We hope you found it helpful. Be sure to check out Iceplate XO Gen 3 on the product page. Again, just to recap, this is our ultralight minimalist plate carrier and it is designed to seamlessly integrate with all of our Ice Age ecosystem products. So let us know in the comments if this was helpful. If you guys run an Iceplate XO Gen 3, thanks for watching and as always, stay frosty.